Today is Monday, October 30th, and this is the ADM Investor Services Monday Market Kickoff. Please note that the views and opinions expressed here today are solely those of our guests and should not be construed as the views or opinions of ADM Investor Services or Archer Daniels Midland Company. Today's guests are Steve Freed, Vice President of Grain Research at ADM Investor Services, and Alan Bush, ADMIS's Senior Financial Economist. Steve, let's start with the grains today. Soybean futures held support last week. Some suggested buying soybean futures on strong demand. Do you feel futures will rally? What would be some of the headwinds? I, I don't. Um, I think that uh, the people that want to buy beans look at the demand underneath the marketplace. And the fact that once we're like 80% down with our bean harvest, our yields are coming down a little bit. So on the November 9th report, USDA could actually lower the crop a little bit. But I think the South American weather is getting better. And I think that they're going to compete with normal crop for the Chinese demand, and our ending carryout actually could go up. So uh, I'm not a buyer here of beans here. So speaking of South American weather, everything's shaping up fine moving into planting? They're improving. I mean, it, it's been a delay in moving into a normal spring pattern, but it looks like this week um, there'll be less rain in Argentina and southern Brazil, and actually some heavy rains in the dry areas of central and northern Brazil. So all in all, it looks like uh, conditions are improving in South America. Can you talk a little bit about the net fund position in corn, wheat, and soybeans? It's interesting that last week the funds added to their small long in beans and meal. Uh, they continue to increase their long in oil, and they're now adding to their short position in corn and wheat and have close to record corn and wheat uh, position. So the question is, will they add to the bean positions? Um, once harvest is done, or and will they start taking off some of their corn and wheat shorts once harvest is done? So right now, they like pushing corn and wheat lower and supporting it with a long bean position. Let's talk about wheat for a minute. Chicago futures back near contract lows. This market is a bit of a dog. Why and can the market ever rally from here? You know, there's too much wheat in the world, and I really don't think so, unless there's a weather problem. Um, the Russians recently came out and said over the next three years they want to increase their wheat production from 80 million tons to 100 million tons. And they're willing to invest 80 billion rubles on their infrastructure to get that wheat from the country into the export uh, channels. So that's a lot of wheat. I mean, that's almost uh, 10 million less acres we need to plant in this country if they achieve that goal. So let's talk about something positive. Last week, China announced plans to blend E10 and their gasoline by 2020. Will this increase corn demand, imports, corn prices? You know, we're looking at um, just an increase overall in their gasoline demand by 2020. And then if you take 10% of that, it works out that they'll need an additional 30 to 40 million metric tons of corn to satisfy that demand. Now on one hand, all they have to do is increase yields. Their yields are half of what they are here in the United States, and they'll be able to satisfy that demand. But on the other hand, if the left hand doesn't know what the right hand's doing, they may need to start buying corn soon to satisfy that demand. So it's something that the commercials are looking at very closely. Uh, we don't think that they're increasing ethanol imports, but they could increase uh, corn imports as they build more ethanol plants. Alan, turning toward the financials, on Friday it was reported that third quarter gross domestic product expanded at a 3% annual rate when economic, economists had predicted a 2.5% gain. Is it possible that the Federal Open Market Committee will hike its Fed funds rate at this Wednesday's policy meeting? Uh, no, we don't think so. In fact, the financial futures markets are predicting there is only a 1% chance that the Fed will raise at uh, this week's meeting. However, there is a very strong likelihood that the Fed will raise at the December 13th meeting uh, by 25 basis points. So we are on board with that, and we do believe that the Fed will raise at the December meeting, but almost no chance that we'll see a rate increase this Wednesday. Speaking of the Fed, Alan, Fed Chair Yellen's term expires in February of 2018. Who do you think will be the next Fed Chair? Well, right now it looks like Jay Powell will be, will be the next uh, Fed chair. Some of the others that have been considered, uh, or at least rumored to be considered, appear to be a bit more hawkish. And you would think that 
President Trump would prefer a dove or at least somebody more dovish in that position. So the consensus view right now is for Powell, and we would go along with that. Our prediction is for Jay Powell to be the uh, next Fed chair. The stock market, S&P 500, Dow Jones, and the NASDAQ all hit new record highs last week. Can the stock index futures keep advancing? Absolutely. Even with another rate increase from the Fed, as we mentioned uh, very likely in December, that will not take rates high enough to be an impediment to the bull market. So even with a rate, a rate increase then, we would expect futures to continue to advance through this year and probably well into next year. Some geopolitical things going on this morning, an indictment of Manafort, uh, you know, the, the Trump administration and their ties to Russia. We still have the North Korean uh, cloud hanging over the U.S. Uh, how will these things affect the market, or won't they? Do they only provide buying opportunities? Any of those uh, political considerations, as in the past, have only had a temporary impact. It all always comes down to the interest rate influence in the long term. So whatever goes on politically will only have, uh, I think, a short-term impact, but n nothing that will reverse this bull market. Remember, the views and opinions expressed today on this video are solely those of our guests and should not be construed as the views or opinions of ADM Investor Services or Archer Dana's Midland Company. If you'd like more information about our brokerage services, would like to speak to one of our experts about managing your risks, or would like to open a trading account, please visit www.admis.com.